Hello Internet, it's me Josh, the Aging Gamer. So, on my channel, I like to talk a lot about games from my childhood. Games that usually deal with, like, comics and movies and, and that sort of thing. Uh, games that have a lot of nostalgic value to me. And today I want to talk about something that's always kind of been there. Uh, maybe not the biggest deal, but there's no denying its popularity. Today, I want to talk about Garfield. Yeah, Garfield. I want to freaking talk about Garfield! Starting as a comic strip back in the 70s, it's a comic about a man named John Arbuckle, his dog Odie, and the main star Garfield, who is a Monday-hating, lasagna-eating, coffee-drinking, sleep-loving, lazy orange cat. In the early 80s, the Garfield franchise became super popular, appearing in many, many newspapers, getting primetime cartoon specials, and eventually a cartoon series. I remember as a kid seeing those Garfield window clingers on car windows all the time. That's nuts to think about. As for myself, I used to love Garfield too. I mean, I never went overboard or anything, you know, it wasn't, you know, the Ninja Turtles or Batman or anything like that, but I did enjoy the cartoon. I had a book that I got from the school book fair. But do people still talk about Garfield today? I mean, I know there's still like Garfield shows and movies that have been coming out in the past couple decades, but I mean, does anyone really talk about Garfield? Let me check Reddit and see what they have to say. You guys make me sick! Well, anyway, I want to talk about Garfield's first home console video game release. Because if I don't, <laughs> who will? I remember liking this game as a kid, but that was a long time ago. So, is this game a hidden gem or is it hot garbage? Let's find out. Let's take a look at a game that Sega developed themselves. This is Garfield Caught in the Act. So the story here is that after Garfield's television gets smashed, he attempts to fix it by slapping it together. Throwing away seemingly leftover parts, those extra parts come to life as a monster known as the Glitch. The Glitch warps itself and Garfield into the TV dimension where Garfield now has to go through TV programming to find his way out. It's actually a very suiting premise for the likes of Garfield. It gets him in a bunch of different situations and it just kind of works. So in this game, there are six levels that you play on. First, there's Count Slobula's castle, where we'll see Garfield travel through a cemetery fighting off skeletons and bats. God damn, I hate these bats. They're nearly impossible to hit. So Garfield has a short range weapon attack and a limited supply of throwing weapons. There's lots of levers to pull and caskets to jump on until you make it to the end of the level where you'll fight Count Slobula himself. And of course it's Odie. Once Odie flies into a casket, pull a curtain open to hurt him. After three times, you'll finish the level. Now, between each level, we'll get some bonus stages and mini levels. There's a whack-a-mole bonus stage where you'll have to hit everything besides a specific character. And there's also a commercial break bonus where you control Garfield as you try to collect as many of his Pookie dolls to get more lives and continues. You also have to travel around the TV world. You'll bounce on springs and climb on cords until you find the remote that brings you to the next level. Like the second level here is Revenge of Orange Beard. It takes inspiration from Pirates of the Caribbean and there's also a rather annoying jungle area where you'll have to ascend to the top to find the transporting TV remote. But it's just way too easy to fall and start from the beginning. The boss of this level is a giant skeleton. Just throw bombs at him to win. The third level is Cave Cat 3 Million BC. Sabretooth Garfield will fight off giant enemy crabs and avoid fire in this prehistoric themed level that's covered in cheese for some reason? The final boss here is Dino Odie. Smash rocks into the oblivious beast until he's defeated. The fourth level is Casablanca, a cool noir themed level where Garfield will sneak on rooftops and travel through mazes until he reaches the end, where he'll battle a bomb throwing McGruff the crime dog. The fifth level is The Curse of Cleopatra. <laughs> Jesus. There's lots of traps and puzzles you'll have to complete to get to the end where you'll have to disassemble a giant John Sphinx statue. 
The sixth and final level season finale is just you and the glitch going one on one. The glitch will shoot lasers at Garfield and what you want to do is move these little squares to reflect the lasers back at the glitch. After so many times, the glitch is defeated and Garfield gets to go back home. I actually played this game way on back in the day on the Sega channel. There was a special exclusive version on there called Garfield The Lost Levels. It includes all the levels here, as well as a Viking level, a Robin Hood level, and a train section level for Casablanca. The two extra levels made it to the Game Gear version of the game, but for whatever reason, they were cut from the Genesis version. This full complete version of Garfield Caught in the Act has never been re-released. There's no ROM anywhere for it. It is truly lost in the depths of time. That's so sad. But anyway, this game, good, bad, let's talk about it a little bit more. The gameplay is straightforward. You jump, attack with the weapon, and have a throwing weapon. Garfield can also climb on certain platforms, but it's kind of hard to tell what's climbable until you're already doing it. The game mechanics itself don't feel clunky at all, but the fact that there are enemies everywhere and that you're constantly getting hit sure makes the controls feel off. That's probably my biggest pet peeve about the game. You're just constantly getting hit by something. I mean, there's health items everywhere, so you're not going to be constantly dying, but when you get hit, Garfield gets a wonky animation that can just slow things down. Some enemies you can kill and they just disappear, but some flying enemies like the flying chickens and Odie clouds will reappear just seconds after defeating him. It's just annoying! Because of this, I think my favorite level sections are actually the ones between the actual levels themselves. So while the gameplay is passable, I think the real star of this game is the presentation. The game sprites were actually drawn by Garfield creator Jim Davis himself, so of course they look fantastic here. Garfield looks great! I also love how sparingly the development team used 3D sprites. Just using it on small things like Pookie dolls and the glitch really make them stand out more. And the little small details are appreciated in this game as well. In each level, Garfield has a corresponding outfit to match the theme of the level. Not only that, but his short range weapon and throwing weapon will also match the theme. It's one of those things that Sega could have gotten away with not doing. But the fact that they did is fantastic. You can just tell that there was a lot of love put into the animation of this game. Even the Lose a Life screen has a crazy animation. The game is just visually great, and you know what? I like all the sound effects they use, and the music is pretty catchy too. So Garfield caught in the act. Is it a good game, or is it just forgettable? To be honest, I like the game. It's not a top 10 or even top 20 Sega Genesis game, but it's a decent platformer. It has its issues though. It's got poor level design and a wonky placement of enemies, but it's not broken and I wouldn't consider it a bad game. I think it just suffers most from not doing anything special. If you strip away the Garfield mask, it's just a very basic run-of-the-mill 90s platformer. The Garfield themes are actually the saving grace here. There's a lot of love and attention put into the game's presentation. There just should have been more attention to gameplay. It was really close to becoming a classic. Like I said, it's not a bad game. It's very much a love letter to Garfield fans. I just wish it did a bit more. If you're looking for a short or cheap Genesis game to play, I suggest trying this one out. But these are just my opinions. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. I thank you guys for watching this video. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you want to see more videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Anyway, Thank you guys for watching. I will see you all on the next one.